Hi everyone, I'm Ken with Orion Telescopes and Binoculars, and in this video we're going to be talking about how to set up the Orion Astroview 90mm Equatorial Refractor. Uh, we're going to show you from uh, when it arrives at your door in the box all the way through the full setup. All right, well, let's get started. All right, so this is the box that you're going to find outside when it arrives at your door. So let's open it up and take a look at it and see what's inside. Inside the box, you'll find the various components, and you'll see that they're very well packed for shipping, so there shouldn't be any damage. The tube itself is back here. The tripod head right here. Uh, underneath are the tripod legs. Counterweight and various accessories. There is one or two empty spacer boxes here, so if you, if you see an empty box, don't worry, it's not missing anything. They're just there to make sure things don't slide around in the box. Okay, so here are all of the individual parts. When you take it out of the box, you want to make sure you've got everything present. Obviously the tube here with the rings already attached. The tripod EQ head. Uh, various parts for the tripod, the counterweight and counterweight shaft. The legs here and the tray, uh, the accessory tray. Over here we've got the manual and the CD-ROM. This is the spreader tray that's going to go, the spreader bar for underneath the tray various tools uh, you need to assemble it. Everything you need to assemble comes included with the telescope. And then the, uh, the parts and pieces, like the slow motion knobs, you get two of them. Finder scope and bracket. Uh, make sure you see the O-ring uh, included with the finder scope bracket. And then your two eyepieces and the star diagonal. The first step is to attach the tripod legs to the uh, bottom of the equatorial mount. So put the mount head on its side, take one of the legs, uh, make sure you see the spreader attachment. That's going to go on the inside. So if I'm putting it on the top here, it's got to go downwards because this always needs to be uh, facing inwards. Loosen up the bolt here, slide it into the little slot, and then simply tighten down the thumb knob. You'll probably have to hold the nut on the other side just to keep it from spinning. Hand tight is fine. Move to the next one, again, inward facing. And the final one. Now there's no spreader holding the legs together, so when you raise this, just be careful. Don't spread them out too far because it will tip over on you, just about like that, just to hold it up so you can do the next step of attaching the spreader bar. The next step is to attach the spreader bar to the tripod legs. Now, before you do that, you've got to remove the screws between the spreader clips. Use the included screwdriver and remove these. Take it completely out. Do that with all three legs. Next, take the screw, slide the spreader bar into the slot, and attach the screw all the way back through. You might have to kind of jiggle it a little bit to get it to sit all the way through. And then thread it into the opposite post. Again, hand tight is all you need to do. Don't, don't crank this down. and repeat for the other two. When you've got it all, all the way attached, just pull the legs out so the spreader bar is nice and taut and you're, you're set. Once you've got the spreader attached, go back to the original three screws that hold the tripod legs on and hand tighten them a little bit further. If this nut on the other side starts to slip, just use the wrench and hand tighten it so the tripod legs are nice and solid. Next, you're going to attach the tripod accessory tray to the spreader bar. The three wing nuts that um, hold it in place are pre-installed in the tray, but they're installed upside down just for transport. So you're going to want to take those out, all three of them, and then reattach it going up through the bottom of the spreader into the tray itself. And repeat for the other two. During shipping, the mount head is not oriented to the proper latitude. It's sitting down almost flush with the, uh, the tripod 
uh, itself. So you're going to want to raise the latitude scale up and then tighten it down with the latitude bolt here. You're aiming for your own local latitude. Uh, here in the Cupertino, San Francisco Bay Area, we're at 38 degrees. So I'm going to tighten this in. And as you can see, as I tighten it, it raises the angle of the mount. Just stop when you get to about 38 degrees or whatever your local latitude is. And then once it's there, lock down this big, large locking bolt. While we're here looking close at the mount, uh, I'll just let you know that the little plastic protective sleeve can be taken off of the right ascension circle. So just peel it off with your hands. You might have to dig inside to get the last little bits of it off. The next step is to attach the counterweight shaft and counterweight. Uh, but before you do that, the mount might be oriented in a kind of a strange angle from shipping. So just unlock the right ascension and declination lock knobs, rotate around until the counterweight shaft, which comes out here, is facing down, and you can lock them back down in place. Just remember not to move the head when these are locked down. You only want to move it when they're unlocked. So now that I've got it in the right orientation, take your counterweight shaft and thread it in. Then on the end, there's a uh, Phillips screw. Just take that off. and attach the counterweight. Just loosen the lock knob, slide it on, lock it back down, and don't forget at the end to reattach the screw. We call this the toe saver, and there's a very good reason for that. If you accidentally unlock this knob, this heavy counterweight's gonna come down and smack you in the toe. Next, you're gonna be attaching the tube rings to the top of the uh, tripod. Uh, Unscrew the, uh, the little screw underneath here, uh, take them out of the rings. Don't lose the two little washers. Uh, note there's a uh, standard flat washer and then a split ring washer. And they both go inside, they go up through the bottom, and then the ring sits on top of the flange. Note it doesn't go underneath like that, it goes directly on top. So screw in and then tighten it down into the rings. For this step, you can use your little crescent wrench and just Loosely tighten it. Don't crank it down because you're going to want to realign it when the tube goes into the rings themselves. So just relatively loose like that. Repeat for the other one. And just for looks, make sure you get the opening of the ring facing the same direction on both rings. I'll put it on this side so it opens up the same way on both rings. Now the tube is ready to be attached to the uh, rings themselves. So just place it in uh, about midpoint along the way of the uh, telescope and then rotate it so the focus knobs are facing downwards like that. Take the rings, close them up. You use this little locking ring here. Squeeze it over and tighten it back down. Repeat for the other one. Now at this step, you can go back underneath and tighten down the rings uh, all the way so you know they're securely attached to the mount and everything's lined up uh, nice and tight. The next step is to attach the slow motion knobs. There's a long one and a short one. Uh, one of them goes onto the declination shaft and one of them goes onto the right ascension shaft. It's really your choice, but I like to have the long one over here because with a long refractor, it's, it's closer to your hands uh, when you're viewing. So take your flathead, or your uh, Phillips screwdriver and unscrew, not all the way, just loosen it up so it's not uh, in the path of the hole. 
and then slip it over the shaft here. Now, if you notice, there's a little flat on the side there. That's where the screw goes. So orient the slow motion knob so the flat is where the screw is going to tighten down, and then simply clamp it down. Repeat for the other one. Now you're ready for the finder scope, uh, but before you put the finder onto the telescope, you've got to take the little O-ring, which is installed during shipping here on the bottom of the stock, just so you don't lose it. You've got to put it onto the finder itself. Just put it around the tube and bring it down to this little thin notch there. And that's where it's supposed to be installed. Now the finder goes into the bracket itself. You're going to go in uh, this is the front of the finder, this is the back of the finder. So this is the orientation that the finder is uh, sitting inside the bracket. So you slide it through this direction, and the O-ring is going to stop at the front of this little lip here. So bring it all the way through. You'll have to loosen these two screws so it'll fit through. And then the spring-loaded screw, just pull it backwards so it's out of the way. And then slide the finder in. And after that's done, tighten these two screws back down until you've got it roughly centered in the bracket, right about there. Once that's done, you can slide it right onto the uh, telescope. Just loosen the locking screw here, slide it forward until it's flush, and then lock it back down. Next, you'll be attaching the star diagonal into the telescope. It just slips inside and it uses this little set screw to hold it in place. That's the same way the eyepieces are held in place in the top of the star diagonal itself. Note that you can unscrew these pieces, but you really don't want to do that. That's just for assembly. Those stay threaded on. You don't unscrew anything out of the telescope. You simply loosen the set screw, slide it in. There's a second set screw down on the bottom. And then gently hand tighten them back down until it's snug. Then the eyepiece goes into the star diagonal. Always start with your 25 millimeter, that's your low power. Again, loosen the set screws, slide it in, and tighten it down. When it comes time to remove it, don't forget, don't try to unscrew the eyepiece because you'll actually start unscrewing some of the assembly of the eyepiece and you don't want to do that. When it comes time to take it out, just loosen the set screws and slide it straight out. The next step is to balance the telescope. You've got it fully assembled uh, and with the weight of the eyepiece and the finder, uh, it may not be perfectly balanced. So loosen the RA and deck lock knobs, hold on to it and bring it down to a sideways position like this where the counterweight shaft is horizontal and the telescope itself is also horizontal. And I'm just going to, I'm not going to fully let go, I'm just going to just gently let go for a second and see which way it falls. Okay, obviously you can tell it's way too heavy on the scope side. So that means this counterweight has to be slid further away to balance the weight of the uh, tube itself. So I'll go down a little bit further and I'll try it again. Okay, now it's not falling this way anymore. It looks like it's pretty well balanced this way, but if you'll notice, it's too heavy on the eyepiece side. So in that case, you want to loosen the two rings. Always hold on to the telescope when you do this because you are making things loose. And then gently slide the telescope, loosen up a bit more, slide the telescope forward. And now when I let go, things are stable. So Make sure that's nice and snug again. Make sure your counterweight is nice and snug. And now when you let go, it stays put. It's nice and well balanced like this. The last thing you have to do for setup is to align the finder scope. Uh, this is a really important step and I, and I know a lot of people miss this and they wonder why they can't find anything in the telescope. When you first put the finder scope onto the side like we showed you before, it's not aligned. It's not pointed at the exact same thing that the telescope is pointed at. It's somewhere off angle, even though it looks like it's probably pretty parallel. So you've got to calibrate it. And the way you do that is during the day, uh, find something the hard way. Don't use this. Find something in the main telescope using the eyepiece. Uh, I suggest a corner of a building or the top of a tree or some light post. A quarter mile away or more is, is usually good. So unlock the two knobs. Find the object you want, lock it back down, use the 
slow motion knobs while you're looking through the telescope to fine tune the positioning. So I'm going to say right about there, I've got the corner of some building way off in the distance. So I know exactly where the telescope's pointed. I can see the corner of that building there. When I look through the finder scope, it's not exactly on it. It's, it's in the field, it's off to the side, but it's not right on the crosshair. So you're going to use the two screws, the up and down one and the left and right one here. It's spring-loaded, so as you tighten it, it moves the finder in one direction. As you loosen it, it moves it in the other direction. Play with the two knobs until you've got the same object right in the center of the crosshair. You'll want to verify just in case you've nudged the telescope a little bit. Okay, it's dead on there, and now it's dead on there. So I've lined the finder scope. I can now use it to find some object in the night sky. All right, so there you have it. That's the full setup of the Astroview 90 millimeter refracting telescope. Uh, as you can see, I've raised it up a bit. Uh, the tripod legs extend or contract depending on your preference. Uh, I usually suggest putting it just as high as possible to sit down when you view it. It's much more comfortable than trying to stand up and, and bend over the, the telescope. So as of now, you're ready to go and start viewing the night sky. Thank you very much. Clear skies.